In today's Gaming Guides Done Quick, we're going to go over everything that you need to know about cooking in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. First, we'll start with the basics, which include how cooking works and where to get the recipes. Second, we'll get into some intermediate topics like the cooking community board, which foods you should focus on eating, and how to figure out where to get the ingredients. And finally, I'm going to show you a trick that forces items to respawn in the game so farming those ingredients will take no time at all. If you guys find this video or any of my videos helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe. Doing so really helps the channel to grow. In Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, you get introduced to cooking full course meals immediately after clearing the Saiyan Saga. You take control of young Gohan, and Chi Chi sends you to collect the first of 15 recipes from the Kuki Cook in Kalen Village. The way cooking works is simple. Talk to Chi Chi and you'll have two options, make a dish or make a full course meal. Ignore the make a dish option because you can literally access that option within the make a full course meal option. For each meal, there are three things you need to be aware of. The meal effect, the status boost, and the materials needed. The meal effect shows the temporary effects that last for as long as the effect duration states. The status boost section shows the permanent increase to all of your playable character stats, even the ones you haven't unlocked yet. That's right, no matter when or with whom you eat those full course meals with, literally everyone will reap the benefits. Lastly, the materials needed section shows what meals are needed to make each course. The boxes next to each meal show if you have what you need to make the course. You can also see exactly how many of each material you have and how many you need as indicated by these numbers to the right. Now, as you're scrolling through the list of the different recipes, you'll notice that some of the recipes are highlighted orange and some are a darker brown. The ones that are highlighted orange indicate that you have all the materials needed in order to actually cook that full course meal. The ones that are brown mean that you are missing some of the ingredients needed. If you select one of the brown full course meals and attempt to cook it using the confirm button, you will get this warning stating you do not have enough food items. You can easily check to see what ingredients you are missing by pressing the Select Ingredient button, which will let you scroll through the materials needed list. Select the material with the empty checkbox and press the Select Ingredient button a second time to view which ingredients are missing. When it comes to the recipes, like I mentioned earlier, there are 15 recipes. Unfortunately, many of these recipes are time-gated. In other words, you can only get them after you've reached a certain point in the game. During Intermission 1, you can unlock the meat course as part of the story when Chi Chi sends you to meet the Kuki Cook. This poor woman is a repeat character throughout the game as part of the Attacked Villager substory series. During Intermission 2, the first time you save her, she'll reward you with the seafood course. The deluxe meat course is earned when you complete her substory, Frequently Attacked Villager, during Intermission 3. You can get the premium seafood course when you complete her Continually Attacked Villager substory after you clear the main story. And the Heavenly Ramen course course is the final recipe you get when you complete her Perpetually Attacked Villager substory, which becomes available after completing the Continually Attacked Villager substory. The Ramen course can be found by talking to this NPC in the Central Plains area during Intermission 1. The Pasta course can be found by talking to this NPC also in the Central Plains area, just south of the previous recipe rewarding NPC, also during Intermission 1. The ramen and rice course can be found by talking to this gourmet nerd at Orange City, also as early as Intermission 1. The deluxe seafood course can be found by talking to this NPC in the West City area near the truck with the giant fish on it as soon as you start the Android Saga and get control of Goku. The special ramen course can be found by talking to this NPC at the West City Market as soon as you start the Android Saga and also when you get control of Goku. Another recipe that becomes available at the start of the Android Saga is the deluxe pasta course, which becomes available by talking to this sweet old lady NPC at the Orange City or Satan City Market. The special meat course can get got by talking to this gentle old woman at the World Tournament Arena as soon as the arena becomes available, which is during the Android arc. The super deluxe meat course is given to you as a reward for completing the ancient 
Lucius Android substory during episode 1 of the Boo Arc. The super deluxe seafood course is given to you when you talk to this gentle girl at the World Tournament Arena during the Boo Arc. The premium meat course is a reward for completing the Boo the Bottomless Pit substory after you beat the game. So that covers the basics. Now that you know how cooking works and where to get all 15 recipes, let's get into something a bit harder to explain. The Cooking Community Board. As you can see, right now we only have Chi Chi. The Community Skills section shows what bonus is unlocked for each rank achieved within the Community Board. Our primary goal is to hit max rank so that cooking will always be a huge success. And that just means that no matter what you cook, it will always generate a second meal. I was able to get to rank 9 during Intermission 1 before heading to Dynamic using the soul emblems available. Getting to rank 9 this early also meant collecting every soul emblem available as you play through the Attack of the Saiyan Saga, as well as the ones available during Intermission 1. When deciding which full course meal to cook, the main thing you want to consider is what stat you want to increase. All full course meals add key and HP, but each one adds only one of the following, either melee attack, melee defense, key attack, or key defense. So depending on your playstyle, choose accordingly. Now, like I mentioned earlier, there are a ton of ingredients in this game. The more common ones can be farmed by killing animals such as these deer, wolves, and dinos. Others can just be bought from vendors. You can also see what materials are in which area by going to the world map and selecting the area, then hitting the display area info button to see the full list of acquirable materials in that area. The scum save trick is a mechanic built into the game that essentially forces certain items to respawn, making it possible to endlessly farm these items. The wind tunnel just north of Orange City contains an ultimate awakening water. After you pick it up, simply save your game to a save file, then load that same save file that you just saved. When the game reloads, the ultimate awakening water will respawn in the wind tunnel. You can do this over and over and over again endlessly. This trick works for almost everything from great energetic fish to premium golden gazelle meat to high quality herbs. The only things I've found so far that it doesn't work on are the secret for success items that are randomly placed throughout the game and the D medals because, well, those never respawn. And that's it. If I left anything out or if you have any questions that I didn't answer, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, stay safe. Stay blessed and stay tuned to ICE TV.